Welcome guys to my 2019 game room setup tour. There's a lot of different changes that happen in this room and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. So let's go ahead and get into it. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming techie is the gaming tech. Gaming techie. All right guys, we're here with my gaming tour for 2019. There's actually been a lot of changes in this in this area here. Uh, last year when I did this video, you know, when I did it, I was like, I don't know if there's going to be enough changes in this game room because it's kind of how I want it for me to be able to do a yearly, you know, gaming tour. But at least for this year, a lot of things have changed, guys. And you're looking at a big change already. But before we get into everything detail by detail, let's actually uh, take a quick panoramic view of everything down there. You know, just a quick little look uh, going down here. And then we'll go, obviously, everything through in detail. Um, so you can see. Quick panoramic view of everything. If you come into here. Quick view, quick view. All right, so that's everyone's quick view of, you know, the whole entire room here. But let's obviously go through some details because that's what everyone's here for and how things function down there. Some of the new stuff that was added, some of the changes that were done. So... The first big change you guys are obviously seeing is the entrance walkway. Last year when I did this video, the only thing I had was that Carlos' sign. We did a 90s party. I actually had a vlog on my channel for this. And we didn't know what to do with all the extra posters and stuff. And, and you know, this Mighty Ducks jersey, the replica jersey that I got uh, for one of my favorite all-time movies, that's what I wore for the party. And I was like, I don't know what we're going to do with these. We're really going to chuck all these posters out. We finally, you know, like a month after doing the party, my wife came up with the idea, let, let's, you know, use them in here. So this is an ongoing project. We're always adding new things to this area here. Um, you know, we're not going to go all the way up to the ceiling because God knows how we'd reach up there. We're, I want to go up to like the hat area across there and, and you know, fill some of the, the empty holes. But this is, like I said, you know, an ongoing project that, you know, as we get cool 90s collectibles, this is like the 90s collectibles area. Uh or 90s posters area slash memorabilia and stuff because there's more 90s stuff downstairs that you guys will see in a little bit. But anyway, scrolling over here, we got an official Boar Meets World hat. This is actually an official hat from like 19, uh, the 1990s that they actually had back there. Here's a little I Love 90s uh, thing. And this is uh, just a me printing out my favorite scene from my favorite show of Boar Meets World in the 90s. The classic, uh, you know, she's going home to Pittsburgh and... That's the iconic scene that I have in my memory forever from that show when I was a kid. Uh, we talked about this jersey here. Here we have some pops right now from the 90s. We've got Rocco's Modern Life and Tommy and obviously the Rugrats poster. And over here we have Hey Arnold. If you scroll down here, this is actually a signed puck by uh, in the Mighty Ducks movie that we were just talking about. It's actually hand signed by, by uh, Averman in the movie. So that's a really cool thing to have that signed. And then, of course, you have the famous Nickelodeon magazine from back in the day that everybody as a kid wanted. And uh, Camp on a Wanda hat there. Oh, sorry, hat. Uh, bottle. And these things are really cool. I wish I had an easy way to show you this. I have a family guy one. I have another one downstairs, and I'll show you in a little bit. Basically, this is like a thing you put above your TV back in the day, and it has like 20 phrases when you point your remote at that little sensor. It randomly says things while you're watching the show, being like, hey, this show is terrible, or, you know, in the Family Guy voice, in the Family Guy theme, so that's pretty cool. Uh, going down here, we have nine, uh, Ninja Turtles poster, and this is really cool because it's signed by, Donate uh, by uh, Donatello, so he has that sign there who played him back in the 90s, and this is signed by the Red Ranger. These are all hand-signed, of course, so I wouldn't be talking about things being signed if they weren't hand-signed. Uh, this is... Kelly Kowalski, of course, from Saved by the Bell, and Rachel Green uh, from Friends, of course. This is actually a hard pop to get your hands on. I'm not really into, like, collecting pops to get the most rarest ones. I already do enough of that with games and, and board games. But I do like to have some of the cool ones that, you know, mean something to me. And this one was actually hard to find. Um, moving over here. This just came in a couple of days ago. The iconic duo from Boar Meets World sitting over here. This is an official... Uh, Boar Meets World, Touchstone Television, like, uh, I don't know what they used to call it back in the day, basically like a picture that they used to give the cast, this is like an official one, you know, that Touchstone gave out to the cast and stuff that I found on eBay, luckily, um, so this is a really cool, you know, thing to have, same thing with Dawson's Creek, this is another, uh, favorite show of mine, and of course, Katie Holmes there, and again, this is uh, a poster, or not a poster, but a, uh, photograph 
or promotion or advertising kind of thing that was given out for it. So, and of course, like I said, Corey and Topanga, the iconic duo that just came out in pop form like a couple of days ago. So that was an instant buy when I saw that. Moving right along here, we have the Space Jam posters, Saved by the Bell, of course. Of course, we got Boring Meets World sitting right uh, as the main entrance, because like I said, it's my favorite all-time 90s show. Uh, right next to that, we got Friends. And then we got a Backstreet Boys poster, iconic 90s boy band, of course. And we got a Yo-Yo. We got Our Lips Are Sealed, Who Can Forget About Mary Kid and Ashley, and all the movies they made there on VCR. And Pokemon, the first movie going down here. There's a Dawson's Creek. Uh, of course, we have here the Eminem uh, CDs. Uh, the first one came out in 1999. I cheated a little bit and added the other two because they were so memorable when I was a kid that were actually added a little bit later because they came out in the era, like 2000 and 2001. And of course, here's the Man Cave sign that you guys have seen from last year. Uh, I think that covers everything in here, so we can go ahead and go down below. Uh, here we go with the Man Cave sign that was here from last year. Um, Beware Vice sign is still here, of course. And uh, we got a little restroom sign here. This is the movie room side. This is the side, the side of the room that's changed the least. But, uh, you know, it's still there's still some changes around. Giants poster. We had that video game high school poster. Really good show. If you guys have not seen that, definitely make sure you check that out. And here's the movie side. So... Let's go ahead and start here on the left. Of course, we got the famous popcorn machine here with its snack time thing. And, of course, my favorite uh, candy station here with flights. You got all the favorite snacks in there. Got some Airheads, got some uh, Crunch, Sour Patch Kids, all that good stuff. Cotton candy machine, snow cone machine, and, of course, the hot dog machine there. And then we got the projector, which is the movie room projector that we use in here. We got that screen over there on the top that you see comes down and takes up the whole entire area when it's in use. Uh, let's go this way over here. Of course, we have this horn here. This horn is awesome. It's, it's linked uh, through an app on your phone. It's from Budweiser, and basically anytime your favorite NHL team scores, this goes off on its own, and it's synced to goals in real life when they're actually playing, but I can hit it manually for you guys. So that's what it would do when the Devils would score. That's what I have it set to. This is newly added to the game room that I got over Christmas, and this is uh, Top 100 bucket list movies you can see some of the ones uh, it's cool because you can actually mark off let me focus in there you can actually mark off the ones that you've actually watched there and uh as people have told me i haven't watched a lot of movies um from back in the day so i have a lot of movies to watch on that top 100 list so it gives me a nice little goal to you know watch movies that a lot of people have seen like schindler's list or uh shawshank redemption which i haven't seen stuff like that um, that I need to get a handle on and, and get that poster. Uh, it's a little hard to, with the lighting over here, just FYI, guys. Um, there's not a lot of lighting in the movie room to film very well, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, some of the posters here did change from last year. Ready Player One got added here. Uh, I love that movie for the obvious reasons that it's a video game movie. It's an awesome movie regardless, even if it wasn't a video game movie. A lot of the people I know who aren't even a hardcore video game fan love the movie regardless. Obviously, it's based on a book. And I actually got a little memento collage here uh, from the movie. I'm trying not to get away in the way of the light for you guys. Ready Player One art book. Their book was right next to it. The 3D Blu-ray and regular Blu-ray copy is there. The Adventure fully boxed Atari game. That's obviously a big part of that movie. The two main characters and, of course, the three keychains. And the Extra Life coin that we know is a big part of that movie as well. Then, of course, got the Mighty Ducks that we talked about and Harry Potter. Down over here, guys, uh, we got some pops. Uh, these are the movie room pop, or sorry, the uh, usually the ones that are over here are all movie-based pops or um, TV show kind of pops that are sitting over here for the most part. Um, you can see that. And these movie bill things, if you guys want to see a video on that, let me know. But it's basically an AR uh, basically magazine that they started doing at uh, regional cinemas that's really cool that lets you read the magazines using your phone. Things pop out of the book, and you can click on things. It's a really cool app and a really cool idea that um, a lot of people don't really talk about. So there's three of them that have come out, and uh, those are the three. So I got all three of those sitting on that shelf. If you move down a little bit here, of course, this is my um, side of the room that like my Xbox 360 and stuff are in. 
and PS3 and my Nintendo Switch and my Wii U because it's obviously the movie room side. So this is where all my current gen systems are on this side. Um, so what I did do this year differently that I should have done a long time ago, and I don't know why I never did, uh, and I did this across the whole entire game room, is that each shelf now features either a favorite game of mine, uh, each like system for the 360, like either a favorite game or a cool collectible or my rarest game in the collection that's being shown off. One of the, uh, you know, if I have a rare game, it's there. And if I have room, obviously I also put my favorite games on there. So it, it details the collection and it's a really cool idea. I don't know why I didn't do it before, but anyway, 360 here, you can see we have a Gears of War, th uh, Gears of War 3 game and what makes that special is it's actually signed by the cast who made the game. Cliffy B signed it and all that. When we went to PAX, so you can see that that's cool there. And some more 360 games here. I have a lot of 360 games here. And, of course, Blur. I love that freaking game. If you guys haven't played Blur on the 360, there's nothing else like it. Think Mario Kart with real cars. It's so much fun. Easily the, my favorite game on the 360. Uh, I love that game. And some more 360 games and some Sonic collectibles over there. And uh, Halo 4 sitting over there as well. I almost couldn't see it because of how dark the camera because I'm looking through the camera. Um, down here, we're moving along here. We got the PS3. We got the MotorStorm series here. I love the MotorStorm series on the PS3. Uh, man, I wish that series would come back. But those are some of the best racing games on the PS3. And, of course, Last of Us. You know, if you haven't finished that game, stop this video. Go play it. Actually, don't stop the video. Watch this video first, then go play The Last of Us because that game is freaking great. And Last of Us Part 2 is coming out here uh, in, uh, I don't know, a year or two. Who knows? But uh, I'm really looking forward to that. On the Wii U here, not a giant collection uh, for the obvious reasons that the Wii U didn't even have, have a lot of games. But I do have a, like a 40 or 50 games there. There's a back shelf there. And two of the ones that I'm showing off here is one from 101. And Super Mario Maker. Some of the ones that are great on the Nintendo Switch. Or sorry. That are great on the Wii U. Actually, you know, got ported over to the Nintendo Switch. Like, um, you know, recently in New Super Mario Brothers U. So, that's obviously not being featured here anymore. Because these are the only, some of the top exclusives that are left. Because so many games are coming to the Switch now. Speaking of the Switch. We got uh, some of the games here. We got Super Mario Odyssey. And we have The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sitting on there. And a Mario Odyssey coin. Not much going on on that shelf yet. Because a lot of the games that I buy, unfortunately, are... Well, not unfortunately, but most of the games I buy are digital. Because me and my wife both share a console. We have two Switches in the house. So, when you buy it digitally, you can do game share like you do on Xbox. So, if we both want to play the game, I buy it digitally. If it's a one single player game and she's not going to be playing it and stuff like that, then I just buy the hard copy and it sits here. So, over here is just a, an arcade stick that sits in there. Uh, nothing special in there. Clothes over here that we got uh, sitting in this corner is actually all the gaming shirts that I wear for all my videos and stuff. All the gaming shirts are there ready to go when I need them. Um, I'm going to try to do the best I can with this lighting here. But basically on this shelf we got Gears of War, Memento Shelf. And what's really cool if you guys can make this out on this side. I think you guys can. That's uh, Dominic Santiago. Actually signed by him at PAX as well. Signed the pop by him. So that's a really cool piece to have. Then, of course, we have the Halo Reach statue here. Really love that statue that came in the collector's edition years ago. Then we got a Call of Duty shelf that we have here. And then we got some Fallout and Borderlands 2 collectibles sitting down there. Uh, over here, I almost missed. We actually have a uh, my PSVR sits over here. I do have PSVR that can either that is hangs over here, but is actually played on the other side, and you'll see that there in a few minutes. Uh, and then that's the PS aim controller, but it has no room to sit over there, so it lives over here, but it doesn't really get played on this side because it's a projector and you can't really move around in here uh, with a projector behind your head because it will block the view. So that's what that's there. Now, of course, is the main entertainment area here. Three main posters we have back here is Mario Galaxy 2, Halo 4, and of course, The Last of Us we were just talking about. And you could see here my main consoles in this area that are you know, on this side of the room. Um, so let's go through them here real quick. We got the Wii U sitting over here. Uh, we got the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch on top of that. We got the uh, PS4 headset sitting over there. We got a Sonos amp sitting over there. We got the Xbox One X sitting over there. We got a Switch for everything wired connected goes into back there. Uh, we, that's just an external hard drive for the Xbox One X. And that's a 4K Blu-ray player sitting over there in the corner. 
Moving down below, we got the Xbox 360 Halo Edition. We got the PS3 and a PS2 sitting down there. We got a Halo Edition original Xbox completely modded out. If you guys want to see a video on that, of course, let me know. That thing is super decked out uh, with over 700 games installed to the hard drive original Xbox from all the ones that I own are installed on there. And, uh, you know, it's fully modded with all Super Nintendo, all, all, all homebrew games, all that kind of stuff. Really cool stuff in that Xbox. Uh, it's got a two terabyte hard drive too, which is insane. You don't see a lot of original Xboxes with two terabytes hard drives, but yeah. Uh, then we got the denim receiver there that we use. And obviously you guys have seen them already, but clip speakers we have them for our surround sound. We have these two here, or sorry, these three here. And we actually got this one that we passed before and we got this one and something that did get added in the room. I'll tell you guys about now new to this area. If you look above the seats here. You can see there's a speaker there, and there's a speaker above me that point right to these, uh, right to this couch here, and that is for Adobe Atmos. So I have two Adobe Atmos speakers, and it sounds incredible in here when you're watching a Adobe Atmos movie, and it feels like the rain's literally pouring on you because it's literally pouring right at the seats, and it sounds incredible with games that support Adobe Atmos on the Xbox One X as well. Um, and then of course next to that clip speaker, we also have the GameCube sitting over there as well. Moving right along here, we obviously have all the Amiibos. Sorry guys again for the darkness over here in this movie room. There's not a lot of light in this room, like I said. But that is all my Amiibo collection. And then over here we have some some statues from the PS, uh, PS4 that I got from Random Collector's Editions, like the God of War statue, Nathan Drake is sitting over there. Um, so um, really cool stuff in there. And then we have Assassin's Creed, Max Payne, the Bioshock, you know, uh, Batman, some cool stuff over there. Um, and like I said, that's my Amiibo collection so far. That's just a Borderlands chest that came with the collector's edition that's sitting in that corner. Uh, if we move over here, now that there's better lighting, on this side at least, uh, we got Wreck-It Ralph, which might be replaced with a Wreck-It Ralph 2 poster. Uh, unfortunately I still haven't seen that movie because I missed it in the theaters and didn't go see it, so I'm waiting for it to come out on Blu-ray 3D, uh, that I will be importing from wherever the hell that 3D Blu-ray releases, because I love 3D and this projector is 3D. And it's hard to uh, find 3D movies being made in the U.S. now. A lot of the times it's got to be imported from the U.K. and stuff. But I love watching 3D movies down here. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting that and watching it down here. So maybe this poster will change to Wreck-It Wreck Ralph 2 at some point. Uh, Star Wars, of course. And the Transformers poster. Over here is a Star Wars, a bunch of Star Wars figures from... Um, you know, all sorts of movies and stuff like that. We got some random Amiibos thrown in there uh, from Star Wars. We got, uh, you know, this thing here. We got a lunchbox from Star Wars. We got the official lightsaber from Disney sitting over here. That thing is really cool. Really has some hefty weight to it. Um, so, really cool stuff there. And if we scroll down here, that's my Disney Infinity Collection. Rest in peace. That game was freaking great. And... It's still worth owning, and this is why, because there is one piece caught in there. Well, there's a couple of reasons why, but the main reason of why I still keep it around and why all these figures are here. Uh, well, not all these figures, because you technically don't need them. I, cut, I just kind of love the Disney Infinity figures, because there's no other game that lets you use it. But specifically, these two shelves here, as you can see, are the Marvel characters. And in that game is Marvel Battlegrounds. Look that up if you have it. It's basically, if you guys have heard of Power Stone on the Dreamcast, you basically can use all the Marvel characters... Um, and have a bunch of arenas that you're basically fighting each other in. It's a four-player game, or you can play against a computer. It has a little story with it, too. Use any character you want. They all have their own special abilities and stuff, and you just, you know, whack on each other, and basically Power Stone literally is what that game is. And that is why these figures will never leave, and that's why I will always own that game, because that game is hilarious fun with your friends. Um, down here, we got some art books sitting in the corner, and these are my... 95% of them are 3D Blu-rays, uh, like I talked about. Uh, reason being, I don't really collect regular Blu-rays because most of those are also digital. Um, because I usually, I, you know, I have them on, I have a lot of Apple TVs in this house. I have a lot of iPhones, obviously, and all the Apple TVs, so everything syncs up there nicely. I get a lot of that stuff on there, and now that they started releasing 4K copies on there, obviously 4K digital copies are not going to be as good as a real copy of a Blu-ray, but it's close enough, and, you know, 
it's just way more convenient to be able to watch those movies anywhere. So anything that I have as far as 4K Blu-rays, they're sitting on Apple TV. So that's why you won't see any here. For the most part, you'll just see 3D Blu-rays because, like I said, 3D Blu-rays are awesome. Over here is all my old school uh, DVDs. And you'll see where I play those there in a little bit. But basically, these are my... Uh, DVDs, uh, some classic TV shows, Boy Meets World, sitting there, the full set. Friends are sitting back there. Happy Gilmore, one of my favorite uh, movies that I used to watch. Uh, Eight Mile, of course. So, some good stuff there. Um, over here, we got, um, this is where all my controllers live. This is some, some cool Nerf guns that were painted Star Wars-like. Um, but I have these all organized. So, this is like my GameCube stuff. We got some GameCube controllers in there. These are uh, wireless Xbox One controllers, or sorry, Xbox, um, original Xbox controllers, PS3. Here's the main controllers that I'm always using. So we got the Xbox um, One Titan controller. We got the Super Smash Bros. Nintendo Switch controller. And a PS4 controller and some more stuff in there. Now, um, we'll get to this thing here at the wall last. Don't worry, I won't forget about it. Um... But basically, here's the couch on this side. And the couch, of course, has um, the features that we all like. So you can come over here. You can turn the light on for the cup. This can move the actual headrest. Or you can obviously hit this. If I was actually hitting it. Yep. And the chair will obviously come up. So we have that on both sides, of course, for both chairs. And if you come over here and you open up the center console, which is nice. You can come here, open this up, and awesome, you got two actual power outlets and two USBs that are ready to charge and an eating surface to eat on when you're chilling down here uh, with two people watching a movie. So, And it wraps back up when you're not using it, and then this becomes basically, even though it looks like a three-person couch, very easily could fit four, which is what I wanted it to fit, which is four. Now, uh, back here, I may have missed a sign there, but that's just a cinema sign, of course, uh, with some... Uh, Nice retro throwback to prices. Um, I believe that covers everything on this side, guys, that I wanted to tell you guys about, except for this last thing. This thing is awesome. It's actually now linked to Alexa on the other side. I don't want to say it's a lot to, you know, make everyone's thing go off and mine go off. But basically, this is something that I talked about in one of my home theater um, when I did my smart house tour. So if you want to get a full detail on it, definitely look there. But basically what it is, is this is synced with my phone. And with everything in the everything in this basement. So you can see here watch TV is pulled up on here. And it says game room in the corner. And the reason for that is because in the game room next to us that we're about to walk into. The watch TV activity has started. But if I go back here. You can see that I can go to the game room. And anything from right here that is labeled I can just tap. So you can see. Let's focus in there for a second. You can see here that it says play Xbox One. Play PS3. Play original Xbox. You can scroll. Start all those activities. And, you know, once it's started, you get a specific menu and specific buttons for it. You can control the volume down here. Anything that needs to turn on will turn on, you know, whether it be the, the you know, the denim receiver or the other room or whatever. And it syncs up instantly with my phone. So if I click on something here that says I started an activity in the game room, and I use this all over the house, not just the basement, but this is where it's mostly at, at used in. And actually just, you know, when I go on my phone and I use the same app, of course, it's also going to say all the activities that have started. I can easily control it back and forth and everything syncs up. This thing is awesome. And then on top of that, these bottom icons even shows me, um, even syncs with Apple HomeKit, which is what I use. I use Apple HomeKit slash Alexa for everything around here. So I make sure that whatever I buy from the smart house works for both. Because then it integrates into here. For example, if I click on the camera here. I can see my front door if I want. I can see the movie room. It takes a few seconds to load. You can see where we're standing right now in the movie room and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, you can check out all the cameras, like I said. So this thing is, is a full all-in-one package. It works with everything in this room. So if I were to in this movie room, that's the game room stuff. But if I were in this movie room just to click, you know, start TV in the game room, or sorry, in the movie room, then everything, the lights would turn off, the projector would turn itself on, the movie screen would come down, uh, the, the Xbox One X would turn on if it needed to, or the PS4, whatever it may be, would all turn on, and with one click of a button, all that would be done, and you're ready to go. It makes it really easy when people come over here, and, uh, you know, I'm not here, or something like that, for them to start something, because there's obviously a lot of systems back there that uh, sometimes are a little bit hard to get together.
All right, so that takes care of this side of the room, guys. Let's go ahead and get to the other side of the room. So if we take this out of the way, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on in this room. So let's actually do it a little different. Let's start on the right side because this is where most of the changes have happened this year. There's been a lot of changes across the board everywhere, you know, between the Adobe Atmos that we did over there, you know, a couple of smaller tweaks with the poster changing and, and you know, that uh, little area that we did and stuff like that has, has added some flair to the movie room, but this obviously changed completely. If you guys remember from last year, there was a ping pong table here that took up the majority of the room, and I finally decided to get rid of it because... Let's face it, a lot of the times when I was in here, the ping pong table was always in the way. I always had to leave it in the corner, and then it made the game room ugly when it was folded up because it would block half the game room. And I was doing that more often than actually playing ping pong. Uh, so me and my wife finally came to the decision to get rid of it because, obviously, this is also our VR area. And it turned into a lot more, which is why a lot of the changes have been made here before. Um, VR always used to be played here. It's still played here. You can see the little cameras there above and the Oculus headset still sitting there, and my cameras are still uh, up there, but it was always a pain because you had to keep moving that thing. Now, these couches that I have here, they're called Yoga Buzz, they're beanbag chairs, they're freaking awesome. It's very easy to take these things, throw them on the other side, and this rug is the exact layout of space that I have set up in the Guardian system on the VR. So when someone comes over and they're new, you know, when they're on the rug and stuff like that, it's very easy if they if their feet go off the rug, they know they're off my boundaries and they can't go anymore. So it makes it really convenient for them to be able to, you know, figure out VR and play it easily. But anyway, what changed the most on this side besides the ping pong table leaving and stuff like that, that I'm really excited about besides these things that are the most comfortable beanbag chairs ever. And I even have the little uh, blankets that you can use. I got two of them. And you could do all sorts of things with this. It even has this little cup holder. These are called couch coasters. And you would think that these things fall, but trust me, these things do not fall even when you're sitting on this and you're rocking it. That drink will not go anywhere. Uh, this thing has some, night, n some nice weight to it to hold on to it. And I've never spilled a drink on this thing yet. So that thing is awesome. And like I said, they're the most comfortable beanbag chairs ever. Um, but and uh, besides the rug that we added here, we obviously added this little console here. Uh, for storage and basically what we have in here is all the systems that we can play on this side All the systems that I showed you on the other side can also be played on this side and independently of each other So that denim receiver basically has two outs So it has one out for the projector and one out for this room So that means that if I wanted to you know watch Apple TV on that side over there And I wanted to play the Xbox one that's sitting over there I can just play that play the Xbox one X over here and watch a movie over there or vice versa each console can easily go back and forth, which is really nice. and makes it really easy to play. Um, but what really made me excited about this side that I had no option to do before. Now, I'm a big fan of Rock Band, which is obviously these drums sitting here. That's, this isn't a permanent spot, but I've been playing it so much that it is right now. We got the Rock Band drum sitting over there. We got DJ Hero, if you guys don't remember that game. Uh, we got that Switch game, the, the drum game. I forget the exact name off the top of my head right now. We got the Rock Band uh, mic stand. So we all like to go out over here and play Rock Band like crazy. But before, it was always a pain. And including, like, obviously you can see on top of my fridge now that changed. You can see that there's now the PS3 camera, the Xbox Connect camera uh, for the 360, the Xbox One camera, the PSVR camera sitting there in the corner. So all the camera-related systems and Rock Band and stuff never had a place to play. So when I wanted to play Rock Band, I had to disconnect the Xbox One X, bring it upstairs, put it in my living room bring the things up there, and we weren't using this game room to its full potential because we always had to go upstairs to play anything camera-related. And what happened was most of the time we didn't do it because it wasn't very easy to play, and it had to involve me disconnecting cables and bringing it upstairs, so it wasn't very fun to do that. So most of the times we just didn't do it. And the Kinect and stuff just never got played, even though I have a lot of Kinect games, and I enjoy a lot of those games um, when I first got that system before we moved in here. But now, this is perfect. Because um, now... We have all the cameras setting up on here. We got this system here. Like I said, you just throw these to the side. You're ready to go. You got the connect and stuff. You can play Rock Band on the rug. You got the drum out. You're good to go. And now we actually have people down here when we have parties and stuff. Not only is it only just four people in the movie room, but when we have actual parties and we want to, you know, have people playing, now we actually have more seating over here. Uh, so we can have two or three people sitting over here on each one of these playing whatever game, playing, you know, Jackbox and stuff. Um... We're playing Rock Band and stuff that used to only have to be upstairs and you used to always have to move the systems and stuff, which wasn't fun. 
And I'm just really excited about this area now. And that was a big reason why all these systems now work over here. And obviously what we added here that you guys may have noticed is obviously a new 4K TV. So we can obviously, this is a Samsung 49 inch uh, OLED 4K TV. Um, it's a freaking amazing TV. 49 inches is obviously the highest I could have gone here because this is literally right on top of that that uh, bar table over there. So this is as big as I can go. 49 inches, 55 just wasn't going to happen. It wouldn't work out there in the corner. But 49 inches is plenty big for this side, uh, especially with the movie room right next to it. But now I play a lot of my Xbox One X 4K games on here in PS4 because while the projector is 4K... It is a simulated 4K, which is the best way that they describe it. It's not true 4K. It takes 4K input. But 4K games will always look better on this TV versus that projector. Um, because this is true 4K, and that's like a simulated one. Sometimes it's hard to tell with certain games, but it does look a little bit better. And obviously, this has true HDR, and that projector is a little wonky with HDR. But it still works. But So I go back and forth. Sometimes I'm in the mood to play on a big screen with almost 4K. And I'm like, all right, let's just do it. And, you know, we go in there. Or I want to watch a movie. Of course, it's in there. Sometimes we come in here. We're like, all right, I really want to see Red Dead Redemption 2 at its full glory in HDR and 4K. So I'll come in here. So this setup is perfect. And uh, I'm really excited about this area and how this turned out and how much better it is than just having a ping pong table that hardly got used. So enough of me talking about that area. That explains everything going on over there. Um, over here is obviously our Devil's Wall. Not much got changed or added as far as I can remember over here. This is just my devil's wall with a lot of memorabilia. Uh, Marty Brodor signed jerseys over there. Uh, Patrick Elias signed jersey over there. That's still got to be framed one day, but that's signed. A lot of these pictures are signed by a lot of the players. You know, another Elias thing on Jamie Langenbrunner. Uh, Danico, um, you know, a lot of signatures all over the place. Uh, Bruce Driver, um, a lot of cool stuff there. And we got that frame with the back of our, uh, you know, with our, our um, Marty Brodor picture that we went to. So that's cool. This is our Marty Brodor shrine. Uh, best goalie of all time, that's obvious. And uh, that's a picture of us taking it in front of his banner, so that was really cool. Being season ticket holders definitely has its perks sometimes. So, moving over here, uh, a couple of quick changes here that weren't here before. The bar sign that we had before obviously couldn't stay because it went past the TV, so the TV was blocking the R. So that was kind of useless and it didn't look right, so... We got this new bar sign instead, which I think looks really, really cool. Basically, uh, it's a bar sign, but it lets you put like bottle caps in it from all our favorite drinks. So you can see here all the bottle caps that we have on here from everything that we, all the beers and stuff. So that's pretty cool and how it's decorated. I think it came out pretty well. And of course, we have uh, this new thing, the iCade moved over here, and we have an iPad, old iPad 2 sitting here. And what's cool about this is obviously you can play all the old iCade games because it's an iPad 2. It never got updated past iOS 9. And as you guys may know, a lot of the apps stopped working after iOS 9 that used to work on iCade and stuff. So now you can still play them. Everybody remember uh, Flappy Bird? That obviously can't be played anymore because it never got updated past iOS 9. Well, on this you can because it's an iPad 2. It's got iOS 9. You can play with the iCade controls with a bunch of different iCade games that are on there. And it works great uh, and lets you play some of those old games that you can't play anymore on the newer devices. So that's a cool little retro area to play over there. Obviously, we got some tool bar stools over here. Uh, rock band jumps that we talked about. This is the dart board. This has a it's an electronic dart board. So when you throw a dart at it, obviously it electronics electronically keeps the score for you. So that's really cool. Uh, oh, and I almost forgot. And now that I'm looking over here, you guys may remember that there used to be a Sonos Play Five over here. I actually got rid of that. It was mostly used for. Um, Music rare sometimes and for board games when uh, there's like, uh, you know, you're playing a game that has to require sound and stuff and you want it to be really loud. So what we did instead, uh, we got rid of that and now we have the Sonos One uh, sitting over here and I almost forgot to talk about that. But basically the Sonos One now connects to the TV so that is my sound. I don't use a TV sound. TV sounds always terrible. We all know this. So this is the play bar that the Sonos came out with here recently and the thing sounds really, really good. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to... And it has Alexa built in, which is really cool. I'm surprised it didn't go off. I was waiting for it. And it works with everything that I talked about in the other room. So that little iPad thing that was on the wall that I said, you know, can control by pressing a button to watch TV in a certain room or stuff. I could also tell that thing to be like, hey, play, you know, play Xbox One X in the game room. And if everything here was off, it would turn the lights on. It would turn my TV on. It would turn the Xbox One X on. All that kind of stuff. So it works with that thing 
uh, or with any Alexa device in the house, really, because we have a bunch of them all over the place. We can start any of those activities in any rooms, either through that thing or through our phones and stuff. But it sounds really good. Let, let's give it a little quick test to see how, if you guys can uh, hear it a little bit. Oh, actually, you know what? We can't because we're going to get flagged for music. Uh, YouTube. But trust me, guys, it sounds really good, and it sounds a hell of a lot better than what the TV sounded like when I first got the TV. It's an excellent play bar for a, a room this size here. Um, so that uh, makes a really good sound in here for playing rock band and a lot of the music games that get played in here. Uh, going back over here before I lost my train of thought over here. Uh, so this got a little bit of a makeover as well because now the Sonos speaker is gone. And uh, we added this thing here. I know that this might not be a big deal for a lot of other people, but these are the posters that we have here. But we had this little candy station slash snack area. So when we have people here playing board games, we have a little snack area. You can come over here, grab your favorite snack. We always keep this stocked, especially when we have people coming over. And, uh, you know, keep some of our snacks here that uh, either my favorites or I know that a lot of people like. So that's really cool. And, of course, we have the... Uh, Oculus Go sitting over here. I put this down here now since I use it down here a lot more and now I got some space down here. So that headset is also down here and I'm hoping one day something will be sitting right there. The Oculus Quest when that comes out later this year, which I can't wait for, will be sitting right there with it. Uh, of course, we got this giant board game collection. Uh, I don't think I'm obviously not going to go into detail on all my board games, but this is all... Uh, it's not in alphabetical order completely. What it is, is it's set in, in, in player order and then alphabetical. So, like, this player, this is all, like, my two-player shelf. And then this is all the four-player games in alphabetical order. And then we got the five-player games in alphabetical order. And then the six-player games in alphabetical order. And then anything above six players in alphabetical order sitting over here. And then there's some overlap over here because I ran out of room. And uh, those obviously are in alphabetical order. But, uh, so that's the board game area sitting over here. Of course, we got this board game table. I love this table. Uh, it lets six, six people obviously sit here comfortably, but we easily have fit 10 before. You just pull a couple of other chairs, put one here on the corner, one there on the corner, one there on the corner, one there on the corner, and you're good. And uh, you can get a lot of, you know, 10, 10 people pretty comfortably on this table. And uh, it's obviously customized here. Uh, it's really cool. It's obviously got the cup holders and stuff. So it's obviously a poker table technically, but well, actually not really, because when I bought it, they called it a game table. Uh, but it obviously has the shape of a poker table, but it works perfectly great. For every board game I play on it, no issues at all. Moving over here, we of course got my main machine. I did a video on this in depth. Basically, this is my main machine. It has every single game that I could possibly think of running on it. And that thing is freaking great. Uh, nice artwork on it as well. It's Donkey Kong, but the Canadian version, I believe. Uh, that what, That's called Lumberjacks, if I remember that correctly. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong. But that's basically what that's like. And so many games on there, so many cool stuff to see. So that's what's scrolling through there. Moving over here is obviously my retro corner um, and my retro chairs here. Um, these chairs, let's start with the chairs here first. This is really cool. These are X Rocker chairs, this is the retro area. They're both obviously hooked up to power because I have the option to either, like right now, the TV is playing the sound, the sound's coming through the TV, but I can easily. Um, turn these two chairs on they sync up wirelessly to each other with the sound i just flip this little x rocker i don't know if you can see that it's kind of dark over here but there's an x rocker thing right there i just turn that on and anything the tv outputs i can just lower the volume on the tv turn the volume off and these two wirelessly sync to it and play the music uh, or play the game sound so it makes the sound much better it's 2.1 you got a speaker there and a speaker there and it has rumble too so the chair actually uh has vibration and stuff so that's pretty cool all right, so uh, coming over here to the game side, let's come. Let's start here on the corner here. This is uh, something newly added, and it's actually going to get changed in a couple of weeks here because the VCR over here broke, and I'm actually going to change that VCR. Well, it still works, but it's a little wonky, basically. And I'm actually going to change it to a VCR slash DVD when I'm feeling nostalgic and I want to watch those DVDs that I was showing you guys before on a retro TV like it's meant to be watched from back in the day. I can watch my DVDs here when I want to, but this is obviously more of a VCR corner. Uh, these are some of the other tapes that I have uh, around here. So you can see some of the classic VCR tapes that I have. You can come in here and pop that in, sit back, relax, watch it in 2.1 surround sound with two people or by yourself and watch it in retro form like it's meant to be. And then obviously we have a Vetrex sitting back there. Over here we got these lights. This is really cool. Nice change. After hitting it for a while, it does 
Yep, there you go. Well, that's really cool. We got one on the other side as well. Uh, going from the top here, of course, we have the game room sign. And this is the other one that I was talking about that I have here. This is a Beavis and Butthead, obviously. And I'm going to add another one sitting right here in the corner when it comes in. Basically, it, the other one's going to be South Park. And like I said, when you get a TV remote, you just point it at these things and you turn it on and they start randomly saying, you know, favorite lines from the show, talking about the show you're watching on TV, just trying to make you laugh. And it has like over 20 different sayings and stuff from the show. So it's really funny and really cool. Um, over here, we have the Virtual Boy. Over here is our simple way of having all the systems. I know it's a little dark back there in the corner, but basically everything is labeled. And uh, you just come in here. And uh, you got the 3DO, Master System, 32X, Wii, and then you just hit the switch button. And then uh, you got the NES, the Saturn, all that stuff. And these are the ones that are connected through S-Video. That's why they're on a different uh, gray box. So the N64, N64, Xbox, Super Nintendo, and GameCube were on S-Video. The rest of them were on AV. And, of course, the Atari and Intellivision are obviously on a uh, coaxial cable. Uh, so... That is how that goes. And then, of course, here are all the systems. we got the Super Nintendo running right now, obviously. Uh, some of the systems uh, run through them here real quick from the top. we got a 3DO. we got an Atari Junior. Uh, we got the NES. we got the Saturn, the GameCube, the PlayStation, the Wii, uh, Halo Edition Xbox, the Sega CD with the Genesis 3, uh, Genesis 2, or Genesis, uh, yeah, Genesis 2, is that what that was? Yeah. Uh, Genesis over there. we got a Master System over here. The Intellivision, the Super Nintendo, the N64 Pikachu Edition, the Dreamcast, and the PS2. Um, so those are the systems I currently own as far as retro games go. And uh, have a lot of fun with those, obviously. And like I said, Aladdin's sitting here playing right now on the Super Nintendo. So, um, yeah, so this is the retro corner. Have a lot of fun gaming here. And over here, I got everything labeled. This was also organized uh, way better than it was the last video I did. It was always a giant mess. A lot of organization stuff happened around here um, with this game room. And uh, you can see everything here is now labeled. So I got N64, Wii, and NES controllers. Dreamcast, Genesis, Saturn, Master System controllers. PS1 controllers. And Xbox and Atari. And we got light guns down there for all the light guns that I have. And more light guns and arcade sticks sitting there at the bottom. Because uh, obviously this TV is retro, so you can obviously play uh, light gun games uh, for the games that exist out there. And those are so much fun. Uh, over here in the corner, a little hard to see, uh, is more stuff that I usually don't touch too much. Which is why I had to sit in the corner over here. It's still pretty easy to get to, you know, to open this flap and stuff. But it's a little bit more out of the way. But basically, that's random stuff. So it's like Q-tips and alcohol to clean some of the games, you know, stuff like that. And uh, TV plug-in plays are actually sitting in that, and in, in these two are the TV plug-in plays. And over here in the corner is actually my new green screen that I talked about in my last video that I hope to incorporate onto the channel once I figure out exactly what I want to do. And uh, over here in the corner is a black box that is a ThinkGeek like fix-it kit, which is really awesome. It comes with everything and all the screws and all the Q-tips and everything you need to clean retro games. So I love that thing. It comes with everything you could ever need. Um, and of course, Donkey Konga. Uh, bongos are sitting up there too. Uh, let's go through some of these games here in the corner. Uh, we're, and we're not going to go through everything, obviously, but um, give you guys an idea. Like I said, everything here was reorganized, and I'm showing uh, the games that you see are usually at, at least either games that I like, if they fit, um, that I really like on the system, or sometimes the most expensive game I own on the current system. Usually I have them for both, like I have both if there's room. But uh, sometimes it's just my favorite on the system. It just depends. Uh, starting off with the PS2 here, we have Kingdom Hearts, uh, the Ratchet and Clank series, the God of War series, uh, Persona series, kind of Demasi, uh, Amplitude, um, stuff like that. So that's the PS2 side. Then coming down here, we have the Xbox collection. Uh, we have the Halo collection, the Battlefront, uh, the Guy game. Stubbs is a rare game on the Xbox. Sub Zombies. Uh, the GTA series, the Earth's to a real Conquer's uh, Live and Reloaded is an expensive and rare game. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast is a really expensive game, really hard to find game. Uh, over a hundred bucks on eBay for that one. Um, so glad to have that in the collection. Um, so yeah, that's that side. Coming down here, we got some more glass shelves. See some stuff that we added here. This was also redone and reorganized as well. 
This is like our Mario shelf. This is like our Pikachu shelf. Uh, we got our Zelda shelf. And uh, some random collectibles down here. And we got the Dreamcast stuff up here. I love the Dreamcast. We got the Dreamcast Power Stone 1 and 2. Power Stone, of course, being a really hard game to uh, to find in the wild and stuff like that. Sonic 1 and 2. Uh, Mark of the Wolves is up there. Crazy Taxi 1 and 2. Call of Legend, Shamu, Dynamite Cop. A lot of good Dreamcast games that I have, but still a lot more to go that I still want on that system. Moving down here to the GameCube. Uh, Super Mario Strikers. Uh, please bring that game to the Switch. Luigi's Mansion. Uh... Nicaragua, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mar uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee, of course. And I think I think I might have pronounced that wrong. I think it was Akaruga. I don't know. Excuse my for not being able to pronounce that name of that game, but it, it's it's a really good Shunmo game on the GameCube, and it's a uh, most uh, rare game I own on the GameCube currently, as far as that goes. Um, moving down here, we have the uh, handhelds area. So we got the Sega. Uh, Game Gear sitting over here. Uh, we got the Game Boy Micro. We got the Neo Geo Pocket. The Game Boy Color. A bunch of Game Boy Colors there. Moving down here to the three, uh, the the 2DS. Not the 2DS. Uh, the Nintendo DS. Excuse me. Uh, highlighting uh, Chinatown Wars because that game is so freaking good on the DS. What a what a game on that on that system! Uh, how they made a GTA game on there—it's so innovative and so different compared to the other GTA games, but also similar. It's just so good, and uh, that's the rarest game I currently own on the DS. Dragon Quest. Um, what over over here on the 3DS? We got uh, Zelda: a Link to the World, a Link Between Worlds, uh, Pikachu 2DS, and a regular 3DS sitting down there. And those are our two DSs sitting right there. There's a lot of different games there. PSP, uh, Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, and Hammering Hero, the two game, hard games or hard to find games I own on there. And uh, nice, decent collection that I have going. Some UMDs on there as well. We got the God of War edition and the regular PSP sitting here, one modded, one not modded. Uh, then we got uh, the PSP collection, same thing. Uh, actually, these are both modded. Uh, the Both Vitas are modded. This is the. Uh, the slim model, and this is the regular OLED model that I have on here. So you can get your choice of OLED or LCD screen, but thinner, and some games on there. And like I said, they're both modded uh, to be able to easily play two-player games with each other. And I don't have to buy two copies of every game and just buy one and be able to sync them up and play with them anyway. Which is the main reason I modded it. It's just to have two copies when I own one. Uh, coming down here on the Wii, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, of course, Zelda... Uh, Takipon Kingdom is definitely the rarest game on the Wii that I own. That game's expensive as hell now. I don't know what the hell happened. It's over $100 now. Uh, Excite Truck uh, and Excite Bots on the Wii. Great racing games. Cool stuff on there. Moving down here, we got the 3DO. Uh, we got we're advertising uh, Gex on there. And then we got the 32X over here with NBA Jam. Not a lot of games on the, on the uh, 32X, of course. And the Master System and the Sega CD, two, those three collections need to expand a little bit. Because um, there's not that much on there right now for me, my collecting. But uh, hoping to expand that as time goes on. But still, these games that I'm showing off here, some of them are really good. Sonic CD is obviously amazing. Uh, Double Dragon and uh, Alex Kidd is also really good on there. NBA Jam is obviously awesome on the 32X. I believe they say that's the best version of any... Of all the of the original NBA Jam, I believe the 32X is regarded as the best one. Uh, arcade Perfect Port, stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure that's the case for that. Sega Saturn, a system I never owned. I love the Sega Saturn, and now that I'm you know getting into it, just like the Dreamcast, never had it as a kid, but playing it now is so freaking awesome. Unfortunately, the games are expensive as hell. The most expensive games probably across the board is probably all Saturn. I don't know, but it feels that way because, like, this one game here, Saturn Bomberman, the treasure of my collection, because that game is freaking awesome, and it's the best Bomberman game ever, in my opinion. Um, and that game is like $300 on eBay. Freaking ridiculous. I didn't pay that, but it's ridiculous. Uh, Three Dirty Dwarves and Guardian Heroes, also over $100 each for those. Uh, Christmas Nights into Dreams, really good game. Panzer Dragoon, I hope they get Panzer Dragoon 2 and 3 here shortly. 
uh, to add to the collection. And uh, so many good games on the Saturn to play. And so many more I want. Just, you know, can't be buying like $150 games for the Saturn every time they want to pop up on eBay. So you got to try and find them in alternate ways. But that's where we're at with that. So here we go with the Super Nintendo. Mega Man, Sunset Riders, Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. F Zero, uh, tur the Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time in Box Complete is the rarest game I own in the Super Nintendo, and uh, Kirby's Avalanche and Kirby's Dream Land three another rare game on the system, uh, Zelda, Super Mario World and All Stars of course. Moving down here on the N sixty four, we made some changes on here. I really like how this turned out with all these stickers now because unfortunately the N sixty four is the only one that they decided not to let you do, um, you know have stickers uh, or anything on the side to be able to read the labels when you have them on a shelf. So you have to take matters into your own hand. So I found these stickers uh, for somebody who was selling them on Etsy and these things are freaking awesome. You can see how great they look on the shelf. So it makes everything look good. So I got the Zelda game over here, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Banjo-Tooie, uh, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, GoldenEye, and Super Mario 64. So some good stuff on the N64 there. PS1. Some highlights, the Resident Evil series 1, 2, and 3, Metal Gear Solid, Twisted Metal 1, 2, and 3, uh, Castlevania, uh, I love that 2 on 2 open ice hockey game, it's so freaking good, uh, Time Crisis the gun with a, with a gun and all that, this is probably the rarest game I own, um, uh, possibly, or maybe it's Castlevania, it's one of the two, but unfortunately it's Poyo Poyo, I just have the disc, that's just a printed thing that it came with, some guy just gave me like a, like a printed thing that he did on his own, but basically it's just a disc. Uh, well, actually, if I take this out, yeah, it's even the back is like some ghetto thing you printed. You didn't even make it the right size. Uh, but the disc is obviously legit. And uh, so I just have a disc copy, but it looks better on the shelf if you at least have something printed. You guys wouldn't even be out. Like some of you guys probably wouldn't even have been able to tell if I didn't tell you that that's not a real copy of the label if you weren't paying attention. But uh, yeah, it's still a really hard game to find. So I'm excited to have that and have the real game and be able to play that really fun four player game on the PS1. This thing is another thing that got a major makeover over the last year. This is my 90s collectibles area. So, and you saw down the stairs, uh, some of my collectible discs are the, where the majority are on this shelf here. This shelf got overtaken by everything 90s. So let's start from the top here real quick. This DVD player is here because I can easily turn this on when I'm feeling really nostalgic. This has a DVD that I have all the 90s commercials of all the toys and all the 90s commercials that you saw from back in the day for food. Um, all theme songs and, and classic TV intros from the 90s and stuff like that will just start playing and, and you know have some speakers on there and, and just play. So that's a cool way to get into the 90s feel and stuff when you come over here and watch that DVD. So uh, And then we got some, uh, some cool collectibles. I'm not going to go through every single collectible. I did a 90s overview video before on this channel if you guys want to look that up. But you can see you know some of the highlights. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Some really cool stuff in here, guys. Uh, I got the original Talk Boy. Uh, we got the the hits. Who remembers that Yak back? Let's not forget about the sidekick. I cheated a little bit. I don't know if that's from the 2000s. Same with the iPod and the iRiver. Can't forget about that. But those things are freaking awesome. There's the uh, Sony Walkman that I had as a kid that I recently found uh, from Sony. CD player. That thing is freaking great. Ninja Turtles. All these things. Uh, Kelly Kapowski card. That's um, graded and stuff like that. That's a freaking awesome collectible there. Uh, Clarissa explains it all. Notebook sitting back there. Goosebumps. Um, a lot of stuff in here. A lot of Nickelodeon magazines sitting here in the corner. Uh, Nickelodeon telephone that really does work if I had a landline to plug it into. And it makes like the... Both of the alarm clock that's sitting there in the back and this phone does the original like Nick, 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 uh, Lodeon, you know, that, that, that thing that happened every time that, that will ring that way with the phone and you can mess with it and do it now. Same thing with the alarm clock. You can wake up to that alarm too. So Polly Pocket, of course, and, uh, skip it. Who could forget about that? And some of these, uh, board games sitting in the corner, Jumanji and guess who and operation and twister and stuff from the nineties. So some cool stuff there. Sorry, guys, this video is really long. I was trying to be as detailed as you guys would want me to be, but not go crazy. But, damn, this video is 55 minutes. I don't know how my old one was, but I feel like this is way longer. But I feel like there's more things to go through this time. But anyway, moving right along. My Virtual Boy collection. Four box games, Mario Tennis there. This is the Vetrex collection. 
This is my Atari collection. I'm really digging the Atari right now because I never played with the Atari paddles before. And I'm really loving... There's so many good Atari games that came with the paddles, especially multiplayer stuff. Like, Medieval Mayhem is not an official release one. Medieval Mayhem is a is like... Uh, I forget the term right now. Not a repo card, but like something like a... Jeez, I can't think right now. But uh, a game that somebody made, basically, for the Atari uh, a couple of years ago. And that game is so much fun. It's basically a better version of Warlords that actually did release. And then you got Circus Atari, um, Super Breakout. So many good games. And this Harmony thing is basically a cart that I got that lets you put an SD card into it and have all the Atari games if you want to or all the homebrews. That's the word I was looking for, homebrews. So I think unless you have all the homebrews that people have made over the years, because that's a lot of people making Atari 2600 games back then, and some probably still do. And I just threw all the homebrews on there uh, on that Harmony card, so that's really cool to have. Uh, then, obviously, my Intellivision collection here, Burger Time, and uh, the rarest game I own here is Safe Cracker. And here's my NES collection. Uh, NES, I have uh, Yoshi sitting over there. got a little Mario 1, 2, and 3 shrine over here. And we have uh, Link down here. Uh, Kirby's Adventure sitting there, there in the box. So some really cool stuff on the NES here. And then I have come to the last video game system here, which is the Genesis. Genesis here is... I uh, have some rare stuff on here. Mutant Hockey League is probably the rarest game I own. Um, and then we got Streets of Rage 1 and 2. We got Sonic uh, 1 and 2 and 3. Yep, they're all there. And Gunstar Heroes is another rare game. Contra Hard Corps is another rare game. Not only are they rare, but obviously the games are good. I wouldn't have them if they were just rare. I'm telling you guys what's rare just because that's what people seem to be most interested in half the time. But I had them because the games are freaking awesome. Um, that's why they're here. So... Uh, and then, of course, NHL 94 is sitting there because NHL 94, best hockey game ever. So that is an overview of my collection of everything in here. Now, the last part of the game room is obviously my PC area. Or actually, you know what? Before we get into that, let's just talk about this thing right here. Uh, this is a Bubble Hockey Super Checks. This is the original ones that were always in the arcades that you guys all know. Obviously has an electric scoreboard that works and stuff like that. You can uh, press the side button here. Where is the start button? Press the start start singing the American flag but if we skip it the puck comes out there and you can see it's a customized Rangers versus Devils obviously we're a Devils house and uh, it's all customized all the players are designed that way so that's a really cool piece to have a lot of fun playing that all right so coming to the PC area that we have here I don't know how this shifted over when I shifted it before but anyway Another one of these posters that I really wanted to add to this side. We had no, you can see that we have no more wall space for posters around here. So it's hard to find room for anything poster related anymore. So the only place we can put this in right now, which actually isn't that bad, is here on my PC area. So it faces this way. So when you're playing games and stuff, and this is my 100 games bucket list. You can see the ones that are marked off that I already scratched. Um or ones that I've played, you can see the ones that I haven't scratched are the gray boxes. So I've obviously scratched a lot more video games off that I've beaten off this list. Most of these games I have played before, but I'm not scratching them off until I've actually beaten the games, which is the whole point of what I think this game is about, what this poster is about. Like, I've played Far Cry 3 sitting there in the corner, but I haven't beaten it. So this gives me motivation to go back to these games and now beat them and scratch them off so I can say, you know, I played the 100 games that, you know, at least this company thinks everybody should play, you know, in their lifetime, basically. So this is a really cool poster, just like the other one, made from the same company. Uh, PC area. So if we move this out of the way, this obviously also got a giant makeover compared to what it was in the last gaming setup tour. I used to have three monitors. I used to have the ultra-wide sitting down here below and two monitors above. That didn't work out uh, for a number of reasons, but the most important one is my neck hurt, so I never wanted to look up and use it because it was just not that much fun. And I used to have an old 4K and uh, 4K monitor up there and a regular 1080p monitor up there. I got rid of both of those and I sold both of those to get this 4K monitor. This is the new 4K monitor with G-Sync. So um, this is a really good monitor. Acer Predator um, monitor that I have. And this is the ultra wide sitting here in the corner. So I have an ultra wide 3440 and also a 4K monitor. So when the games can handle it and my graphics card can handle it, 
4K gaming on this side, and they can't because it's a little bit too powerful of a game, and it can't run at true 4K because it's still hard to run those games on a PC, regardless of what hardware you have sometimes. Then I play it on ultra wide, which still looks outstanding and really great in ultra wide. So it's just a perfect setup, perfect way to do things. And obviously, uh, what changed a lot is obviously since those monitors left, I was able to do this, and now I got like a gaming uh, poster here with a definition and an Oculus Rift uh, poster, which is really cool. And then a bunch of collectibles from games that I like. I'm playing on PC, like Overwatch statue, the Destiny statue, my Rocket League car. Rocket League is my most played game. It's freaking ridiculous how many hours I have in that game. Fortnite, Rainbow Six, you know, Towerfall, things like that. Uh, sea of Thieves, shout out to that game. That game is great. Um, and I moved the uh, cameras over here for the Oculus Rift. It works perfectly. I can put these on here. And it faces that direction over there. I don't have to use the stands anymore. I just pulled a little bit of a thumbtack, hung them on the monitor, called it a day. And I don't have to have the desk looking ugly and put those things on there like I used to. So that works out a lot better as well. Uh, of course, we have a lot of new stuff on this gaming setup as well uh, with uh, a lot of Razer products. Of course, as you can see, I have no issues with Razer. Razer has always worked well for me and I love their products and stuff. So I haven't had any issues with them. And... Uh, Razer Noma is their speakers that I have here. Uh, the mouse is a lance head. You can see that here. Uh, mechanical keyboard that's sitting there. The mouse pad that lights up as well. And then we have uh, Razer headphones sitting over here that are wireless if I, if I want. And uh, USB hub that's sitting there as well. So that's really cool. Then we got obviously my 360 controllers sitting over there. And that, and then obviously some gaming um, some gaming uh, figures and stuff like that sitting here from like Overwatch, Portal, you know, Plants vs Zombies, uh, Team Fortress 2, stuff like that sitting over here. I upgraded my Wi-Fi network here recently as well uh, to Aero. A lot of people probably heard of them. I have three of those uh, sizes, and Wi-Fi has never been better in this house. Um, that thing works beautifully. The app is like really good looking as well. Has a lot of cool features. So if you're looking for a mesh system for Wi-Fi, that's one to look into because it's really solid. Um, and coming on to this side, these are all my PAX pins that I collected over the years. From, uh, you know, we went to like eight years worth of PAX. So that's where all those came from. You can see all the PAX stuff there. And a couple of more posters. Uh, I literally like that one. I went outside once. The graphics were terrible. Eat, sleep, game. Uh, I did a video on this clock as well. This is the uh, Lamentric clock. What a lot of YouTubers have it for, and which is the reason I bought it for, is because it tells you exactly how many people, um, how many people you're following on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to switch right now because I think after 11 it turns off and goes a little dim, which is why it's a little dim compared to what it usually is. But basically, the YouTube subscribers go on there and it gets updated dynamically. So, you know, as soon as I get a new sub, it makes a noise. It makes like a ching noise and it updates my, and it shows me my YouTube counter all the time. So it's always like motivation when I'm on my computer editing videos and stuff to look to the left and be like, hey, I'm at this subscriber count now. So that's from really cool stuff. Uh, and then, of course, I have two PCs here at the bottom. Uh, my first PC that I have here is for my Plex server. I have a Plex box sitting back there. Uh, I have a Plex server with all my 90s shows uh, that I ripped from DVDs and stuff like that. So I could watch them anywhere. All that kind of stuff. All 90s stuff. All Disney classic movies. All that kind of stuff. I ripped to the hard drive. Use a Plex server. Put them all on there. And this is the Dell PC that runs my Plex. That's on 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. Um, to run Plex. If you guys don't know what Plex is. Definitely check it out. Because it's a great media device. Uh, and of course here's my computer here on the floor. This is my Origin PC. Obviously also a different computer than I had last year in the last year's gaming setup video. This is a water-cooled PC. This PC is freaking awesome. Uh, it used to be the latest and greatest like six months ago until NVIDIA obviously released those new cards. But it does have a 1080 Ti in there. Uh, um, an 8600K processor. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, RGB light. You can see the RAM is like lighting up and stuff like that. Everything is RGB. They're like syncing up and stuff. It's really cool. And uh, can't really tell from this angle, but it does say you're getting techie and en engraved into the glass there. Can't really see it. But uh, yeah, that PC is freaking awesome. Uh, the process of the graphics card, it's really easy to upgrade and stuff like that. It's from Origin PC, so uh, cool stuff in there. So, guys. After an hour and four minutes, I think we've come to the end of this tour. 
hopefully I didn't forget anything because every year after I do this video, I'm like, damn, I forgot to talk about that part. I forgot to talk about this. But I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about. There was a lot of details to get to this year that made this video a lot longer than I usually want it to be. But, you know, there's a lot of new stuff in this video. And I'm surprised at how much new stuff was here. Because, like I talked about before, I didn't know if I could make a video um, this year that was going to be much different than what was here last year. But I think you guys will agree that there was a lot of new changes in this. And a lot of new changes that you may not notice at first glance. But, you know, a lot of cool changes, a lot of... This being one of the biggest ones to for, you know, obviously this PC area, having a new PC, a new setup, just things all over the place that changed. Uh, even though the overall look is still the same, a lot of different pieces have been brought in. So this gaming setup has gone a lot better, a lot more practical to use with people and a lot more practical to use when there's a lot of people here with this setup here now too. So I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. Um, I don't know what's going to change for next year. I was thinking last year that nothing was going to change, but who the hell knows, guys. Uh, but I can tell you that I'm really happy with this setup. And my main concentration for 2019, as I talked about in my previous video, is to expand my retro gaming collection more than I have uh, in the past couple of years. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Look forward to gaming pickup videos and stuff like that in the future. Guys, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there's anything that you guys want to see more of or details of, of course, leave those comments down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming techy, gaming tech. Eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming techy.